Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dad, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my uh, Microsoft Cloud VDI series. We're on uh, Azure Virtual Desktop, about nine episodes in, and we've covered a lot already, covered a lot of the basics, we've covered sort of um, AVD infrastructure, we've covered um, some of the things you can configure, the image configuration, and uh, you know, adding session hosts and VMs and things like that. We're going to keep on continuing with it. We're going to start going more into security now. Um, so I've had, I've had some questions around my, my office. And again, if you've seen any of my earlier videos where I got to Australia, it's evolved quite a bit. Um, so first of all, just to quickly explain, I've got three clocks uh, along the back wall. Um, and they show obviously different times. I'm not going to show the same time. So um, three, you might be able to read what they are. So one of them is for Sydney. Essentially, they, they, they are three places in the world that are very important to me. So one of them, Sydney, obviously, I, I live here now. This is where my life is. Um, one of them is uh, Lahore in Pakistan, where um, I have a lot of family. Um, that's where my wife is from. So again, a place that's very close to my heart. And finally, the third one uh, to, to that, that side there is Bradford, where I was born, where I was raised. Probably, you know, the most, one of the most important places to me, you know, just because I've left doesn't mean that it doesn't have uh, importance to me in my life. Uh, it's where my family actually live. So my, my, my small, so my family, my, my sisters, well, two of my sisters <laughs> and all my nephews and nieces live there. So yeah, very three very important places in my life. So that's what the clocks are for. Uh, and then I've got some little gifts like that size. Or that, that's the kind of shirt that I got framed, a my United shirt with number 25 for 2025. My nephews gave me that. Uh, and I've got a little birthday present as well. I'm really bad at this pointing up there. Oh, there, that red one anyway, with the, the word gaffer and a picture of me. It's like a football card with some stats on. My nephews call me gaffer, long story why. But um, yeah, so just my, my room is starting to evolve. I've got some more stuff coming, so you'll start to see more stuff. You'll see to hopefully see my MVP trophy and, you know, in, in there as well. Um, anyway, without further ado, let's get started with this episode. Uh, so we are still in the Microsoft Cloud VDI series. Um, and we are going to look at AVD security recommendations. So this is the first part. There's going to be a couple of parts in this. Security is going to be a big theme uh, in this series because I think it's so important for, for AVD. Um, so this is more AVD security and some recommendations and you know the security responsibilities, security boundaries, etc. But then we're actually going to go later on in this series. We're actually going to talk about um, best practices as well. So we'll do a bit of a demo around covering a MFA for AVD conditional access policy, which is very important. So let's talk about security overview first. So Azure Virtual Desktop is a managed virtual desktop service and it includes many security capabilities for sort of keeping your organization safe. The architecture of AVD compromises many components that make up the service connecting users to their desktop and apps. AVD has many built-in advanced security features such as Reverse Connect where uh, no inbound network ports are required to open, which reduces the risk involved with sort of having uh, remote desktop accessible uh, from anywhere. Uh, the service also benefits from sort of many of security features uh, of Azure itself. And this includes MFA, which we'll look at in the demo, uh, you know, and conditional access policies. Um, so it, it, we're going to try and hopefully in, the, in this video describe the steps you can take as an administrator to keep your AVD deployment secure, uh, whether you provide desktops or apps to users in your organization or to external users. <clears throat> Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is this concept of the shared responsibility or shared security responsibility. So before AVD on-premises virtualization solutions like RDP, uh, remote desktop services, sorry, they required granting users access to roles like gateway, broker, web access, and so on. These roles had to be fully redundant and able to handle uh, you know, peak capacity. Administrators would install these roles as part of a Windows server operating system and they had to be domain joined with specific parts accessible to public connectors and public connections. To keep deployment secure, administrators had to constantly make sure everything in the infrastructure was sort of maintained and up to date. In most cloud services, however, there's sort of this, there's what's called the shared security responsibility model. Now, this is between Microsoft and the customer or, or the partner. For AVD, most components are Microsoft managed, but the session hosts and some supporting services and components are customer or like, consumer and partner managed. 
while some components have already you know come already secure with the environment you'll need to configure other areas yourself to fit your organization or customers uh, security needs uh, and we're going to talk uh, some components that we're going to talk about uh, in the next slide um, and, and it shows kind of who's responsible for what uh, ABD is what I like to call secure by design because of like I said main, a lot of the main components of a service are um, protected by Microsoft so here is a table which kind of shows this uh, shared security responsibility model. So on the left hand side we have a um, table that shows the responsibilities of the customer or partner and then the right hand side is the Microsoft. So identity, user devices, app security, session host, operating system, deployment, config and network controls, these are the responsibility or the security of these is the responsibility of us as a consumer, customer slash partner. When we talk about the control plane, physical host, physical networks, and physical location, these are the responsibility of Microsoft. Hence comes the shared security, you know, both us as a consumer and Microsoft have a responsibility to secure AVD. Let's talk a little bit about security boundaries now. So security boundaries separate the code and data of security domains with different levels of trust. An example of this is there's usually a security boundary between the kernel mode and the user mode. Most Microsoft software and services depend on multiple security boundaries to isolate devices or networks, virtual machines or VMs, and applications on devices. So here's um, a table that basically shows the different security boundaries. So this is this all the security boundaries for Windows and what they do and the other sort of security. So we talk about network boundary, you know, the description here is an unauthorized network endpoint cannot access or tamper with code or data on a customer's device. We've got the kernel boundary, which I mentioned. So this is a non-administrative user mode process. Can't access or tamper with kernel mode and data. Um, administrator to kernel is not a security boundary. They have the process boundary. So this is an unauthorized user mode access, uh, process. Can't access um, or tamper with code and data of another process. We've got app container sandbox boundary. So this is where an app container based sandbox process cannot access or tamper with code and data outside of that sandbox based on the container capabilities. Then I have the user boundary, so a user cannot access or tamper with code and data of another user without being authorized. The session boundary is essentially the user session it cannot access or tamper with another user session without authorization. Same, and again, this is just all the same for the web browser boundary, the virtual machine boundary, and the virtual secure mode, basically. And one cannot tamper or access another without authorization, essentially. So that brings us to the end of this video. We're now going to do jump into the demo portal and do a demo of configuring MFA digital access policy for AVD. So please join me in the demo. Welcome back. We're in the demo portal. We're actually in Entra um, because it's where we configure the um, MFA digital access. Um, and we're, we're in uh, protection and digital access and then policies. Now, I've already configured one for, for before as a, as a demo, so I'll just go through that. Uh, like I said, it's essentially it's just conditional access policy with MFA. And it's the same as a standard policy for MFA that you'd configure for, for users for, for M365, for example. However, when you go into, so you specify the users, the target resource is what we're actually concerned about. You go into target resource and you make sure that the select that which what the policy applies to is for resources for formerly what was known as cloud apps. And then we want to select resources and we need to make sure we, we select Azure Virtual Desktop. So we'll just search for it and make sure we select it. Um, and that will uh, basically when we assign those specific users. So we've got, say, an AVD users group. Um, and then to make sure that the control is set to require MFA. Uh, and and well, my policy is off because obviously I was, I was just doing this for, for a demo and testing. But as long as those elements are, are set on the commercial access policy and you turn it on, um, that will then protect from a, from an authentication perspective and from an identity perspective. Your users will have to do an MFA um, challenge or authentication before they're allowed access to AVD. Um, so, just wanted to quickly show how to you can integrate MFA with AVD through a commercial access policy. Um, hopefully, everybody's enjoying the series so far. Again, we've got more to come on AVD. I've got lots more topics I'm going to be talking about. Um, after this sort of v cloud VDI series, I've got some stuff around purview and AVD I want to do. Um, but also I want to start some Azure Arc content as well. And again, I'm kind of keeping an eye on the policy, what people want to see more of is people want to see quite a bit of um, 
we want to see compliance so again i'm probably do some purview content as well hopefully you are enjoying for those people who are now members you're enjoying uh, the member content um, like i said if, if you become i think it's a level two member you can request a specific type of you know a specific video on a specific topic which i'll do for for that member only um so or for members only should i say uh, so again the link of that is down in the description um make sure you if you you know if you're not subscribed actually hit that subscribe button um and again just make sure you keep an eye out for upcoming videos so thank you for watching until next time goodbye